left, right. In this episode, we're talking about cancel culture. Is cancel culture real? Well, one of us believes it is. One of us vehemently believes it does not exist. Listen on. Let me know in the comments whether you agree with James or myself. This is Sip Talk. Grab a drink and enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. All right, we are live. This is Sip Talk. Episode 244, my name is Justin DiGiulio, joined by James, the Bosnator Boswell, philosopher, philanderer, philanthropist, philatelist, a man of very high pH. How's it hanging there, James? I am recovering from this trip last week, dude. I am still wiped out from it. Better today than I was earlier in the week, but like Monday and Tuesday, I was almost useless to the world so for those of you who don't know the reason we skipped the live episode last week was that uh that you were traveling you were following the line of the moon right you're following the line of the moon through the sky uh, for the solar eclipse you went to upstate new york you uh spent some time in and around new york city and then you came out to new jersey visited out in new jersey and now you are back home sick yeah, and I'm not sure whether it was like the crowded bar on Friday night or like being on a crowded airplane Sunday night, like the stress of travel. It's probably all of that, but like Monday and Tuesday, I was wiped out not only because I was fighting off an illness, but I would call it a social hangover where oh, yeah. just traveling for 10 days and always being around people and everything, like my my facilities were just so completely drained that I basically needed like almost two days completely to myself just to like feel like myself again. Well, let's we get a cut. We got a lot to talk about. Well, we're we're going to get to we're going to get to cancel culture, a couple other things. But, you know, they say introverts versus extroverts that that extroverts, when they hang out with people, they get this this feeling of being recharged and introverts when they hang out with people get this feeling of, of being drained. Do you feel yep. that way? Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because I think there's, and I used to be part of this group, the, the misconception about introverts and extroverts isn't about whether you enjoy being around people or not. Um, Cause a lot of people think like, Oh, introverts, they just don't enjoy being around people, which isn't really true. It's more like, how do you recharge your batteries? So if you're tired from a day, do you want to go out with some friends and catch up with them to, 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 to recharge? Or if you're like me, do you want to be locked in a room with nobody around for several hours? And that's how you recharge. Well, I, also to add on to this, you did spend the entire weekend every evening going out drinking. And, and partial day drinking during during some of the weekend. So, um, I, I mean, if you count having a single beer as day drinking on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday afternoon, (laughs) Friday evening, Friday, Friday afternoon. Well, maybe not Friday afternoon, but you did, uh, for those of you who weren't on top of things, you did kind of run the pool table. We went down to the East village and then, uh, the West village pursuing some, uh, some games of of billiards and James ran the table the entire evening. Uh, not the entire evening. We, uh, me and my partner ended up winning like seven or eight games in a row, which isn't bad. Yeah, and well, you ultimately lost the last one, which is why you lost the table at a single pool table establishment. But uh, you also lost to a pretty novice player, and my opinion was you were just kind of done. No, it was uh, the the team that we were playing against. There was one complete novice, wow. and then there was one player that definitely knew what he was doing. Yeah, for clarification. So back to uh, introversion. What what was it you wanted to add that we missed? I just wanted to talk about like. I, I feel like society values extroverts more. 
Well, speaking of introversion versus extroversion, I will say, I don't think you spoke to anyone <laughs> outside of the people you were playing at the table uh, when you were playing, especially in the West Village. You you were very much you were very much kind of into the game. That was one thing that I noticed. Um, your thoughts on that? I mean, if I'm playing pool, that's what I want to be doing. It's like I'm not really interested. Like, it's one thing if I have somebody over and we're catching up and we're playing pool at the same time. But if I'm playing pool with the goal of playing the game well, then I'm not interested in talking. All of your focus is on the game. And a while back last summer, because I I started playing pool leagues a little over a year ago, and I would play out of this bar just down the street. And like when I would play in tournaments or in league or whatever, when I was at the table or when I was playing against somebody, but like it wasn't my turn, I just wouldn't talk because it's I'm playing a game. There's no talking really needed with the exception of like every once in a while, you might need to clarify something with your opponent. Plays like, Monopoly in total silence. <laughs> well, you can think about it like chess where like you don't, you don't talk during chess. It's just, you play a move well, and that's can. it. You can, if you're, I mean, in if tournament you're, chess, tournament, you're not allowed you're to play a tournament. Yeah. Uh, um, I do want to know, I do want to know before we go any deeper that if somebody wants to share their comments with us, uh, or wants to watch both of us because we have a TikTok feed and an Instagram feed, which is only only me. Uh, if you guys want to see both of us and join the conversation where we can read your comments and reply to your comments, you've got to join on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch and just search Justin DiGiulio or search Sip Talk Podcast, which will bring you to my page and you can jump in on the conversation. And one quick plug for SipTalkPodcast.com. You guys should check that out. You can see the current episodes and you can buy us a drink or you buy us a bottle uh, or you yeah. buy us a shot but there are there are options to to buy us a drink and we would appreciate that um that could be pretty cool but here i'll finish up this story quick so last summer maybe june i was playing in the tournament at this bar and a lot of the people at the tournament i had seen before because they either played in league or in that tournament and after the tournament ends and i lost like there was a, a girl that i had played in that tournament and we were talking and she told me that, like, my reputation is the guy who comes in, doesn't talk, and wins. <laughs> speaking of autism, speaking of on the spectrum, what was your what, what were your thoughts on autism versus uh, introversion? I, I feel like... Coupled with introversion or introversion coupled with autism? Can you imagine an, an extroverted autistic person? Because I can't. Um, maybe someone with, with Down syndrome, maybe a different spot but on the Down spectrum, syndrome is not, not autism. But not autism. Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I don't, because I think that autism is uh, sometimes overly analytical. Um, yeah, I, I cannot imagine a, an extroverted person on the spectrum. I'm sure they're out there. I, you know, I think I'm a little on the spectrum, but also, I consider myself an introvert, very much so. Um, and because we do this podcast, because I spend all this time in the office and kind of have to have this persona doing what I do in real estate, a lot of people don't see that introversion side of me. But I, t- I tell everybody, listen, when you're standing on the elevator, those doors open and you're about to step on, are you hoping there's someone in there or are you hoping it's empty and you can step on and those doors close and no one else gets on? Because I am hoping I can just have a nice, quiet ride to the bottom, not have to have any social interaction, not have to think about, should I say hi? Should I say, how's your day? Should I say, how about that weather? I just want just want to get in the ride, put in some headphones, keep my head down, make my way to the train. Headphones with or without music. <laughs> so in my opinion, that's very introverted. Um where are you, I know you want to uh, anything else you want to add on this because I know there's a couple of topics you want to talk about. I want to make um, sure we get to the last thing. <laughs> so, on Tuesday, like Monday and Tuesday, I'm exhausted from this trip, right? And I'm trying to figure out, like, on Monday, it's hard for me to tell, like, hey, is it because you got home at 2 a.m.? Is it because you might be coming down with something, or is it like this social hangover thing? I did, it was too many factors for me to be able to like weigh what was actually like just beating me up. And then Tuesday, like I wasn't feeling quite as sick, but I was still just as tired. And I realized like it's the social hangover thing. And there were were about, yeah, like two days of the trip where 
like I was around a very young child for many hours at a time. <laughs> and I was like, and, and being around young children is just stressful for me. <laughs> and I, was, I, I made the connection on Tuesday. I was like, okay, so we figured out that it's just this whole social hangover thing. If you were to have a kid, you would feel like this <laughs> every day for yeah. for years. And I was talking with my roommate about this. And I was like, you know what? If someone put, proposed the following scenario and I had to pick one, either you raise a kid from the age of zero to two or you go to prison for two years, <laughs> I'd pick prison. You mean to tell me if someone asked you to watch their child for about 45 seconds and left and that child started crying, you would leave the child alone? <laughs> Especially, Yeah, go grab them. Less than two years old. Yeah, I don't have the tools to deal with this situation. Oh man, uh, Raj um, added that that prison is bad, and you can't pick up the soap. I look, uh, I would take prison over raise. Uh, if you if you said you have to be a parent for two years, starting with the newborn, or you could go to jail. I, uh, yeah, like check me in, man. On a, on a separate note, what if uh, this is a Raj comment? What if this what if this child who's less than two years old liked to drink beer and at one point during the weekend tried to chug an entire bottle of beer? Uh, I mean, the the thing is, which actually which hold on a second. It, way. It's um, if I were to have to raise a child from zero to two, there's a strong possibility that I end up in prison because of my actions during those two years. So I view like choosing the prison option for two years is really just cutting out the middleman. <laughs> um, fair enough. I, I can only imagine how difficult it must be to watch a, a young child under the age of two years old. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely feel you on, uh, on the exhaustion after, uh, you know, I teach a, a class on sales every Thursday morning and afterwards I'm like, guys, you just got to give me a little while. I just need to like sit quietly and regroup, man. I've just been talking. You guys have been asking me questions. I just need a little, little quiet time. Do you guys mind? Um, never happens though. Uh, uh, real quick, give a shout out to Jorge. Um, <coughs> played against him at Amsterdam Billiards. Hopefully, I taught him a few things about playing pool. Yeah, that was uh, that was nice. It, you know, it was nice, especially for me because we were doing a little filming while you were playing, and uh, I was. I got to especially thank Jorge for this. It was nice having him there so that I didn't have to play every match. Although, actually, I think he played the lion's share. He uh, probably played 70 to 80% of the shots. Yeah, which was, which was cool. Um, did you want to add a, a note about getting old here? Um, no, we can talk about that later. That, that might be like a separate podcast episode. I, I could see how... The, the topic of getting old and watching people change around you could be could be a, an interesting episode. We'll 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 keep that in the chamber. Um, and and should we should we uh, talk about Trump last if we need to? Can we move on to cancel culture? Because that's that's really what I want to talk about. I got to ask you first, though. I heard you crack open a beverage. What are you drinking over there? Uh, the only thing that's in my fridge right now, which is natural light. Well, that's your favorite. No, it is not. Oh, no, no, you like the bush, bush ice. Bush Although, ice. I'm gonna like being in upstate New York. I was able to grab a 12 pack of Molson's when I was in Watertown. Mm -hmm. Molson is a, Molson is a is a good beer. It's very tough to find outside of um, further from yeah. Canada you get. It's been a long time since I've had Molson, and when I was like sitting in the hotel room with my brother, um, just watching like random bullshit, um, we we're putting away the Molson. They're like. This is ridiculously good beer. Yeah, high alcohol content, decent flavor. Um, solid. So flavor. I'm going to probably swing down to Total Wine this weekend and see if I can get some. What I would really like to find is Molson Export. Yeah, there's a, there's there's a, there, they have Molson Ice as well. I think Molson's got a, a a short lineup there. But just Molson Canadian, like it, it's it's nothing special. It's not breaking like barriers in the <laughs> beer brewing world. But it's just, it's got a good flavor. It tastes clean. It's easy to drink. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got that high alcohol content, which is nice. Um, speaking of brands. So your take on cancel culture is that cancel culture isn't real. You've got to elaborate on that. Cancel culture isn't real. Cancel culture is the free market. It is people learning about 
a person or a product that they might have previously liked and they're learning things about them that they may find distasteful and saying, I'm no longer going to purchase those products. Yeah, but I, or, I think, but saying it's not real because it's just, say that last sentence again. Cancel culture is the free market. Is the free market. Okay. But that, so it's not real because it's the free market is saying like traffic jams aren't real because they're part of traffic. No, oh, no, cancel it's culture what I'm is, is part like, of the free market. The market is going to do what it's going to do. But the argument against what you're saying is that there's a culture about it. There's this people were celebrating jumping on the bandwagon of canceling Bud Light, which, yeah, is, but, which is still taking quite quite a hit. But again, I don't care about that. Like if like the, the whole idea of boycotting something for whatever reason has been around practically as long as capitalism. Okay, I will I will agree with you there. Where the culture becomes where the idea becomes culture is that now you want to boycott something 30 years ago, you don't have that much of a platform to make that much noise to bring that thing down. Now, your platform is a million social media networks with algorithms that push extreme views to the top and you have this this view that a bunch of people are going to jump on board with and now your measly opinion is getting traction and people are jumping on board which is creating a culture behind the brand there are still people who hate chick-fil-a because of some donations they made to uh politicians who were anti-gay marriage and this was a couple of decades ago. It's still true. Like Chick-fil-A is still owned by people that are strongly religious and, and support conservative ideologies, conservative political candidates and conservative platforms. And so I don't I don't see if they have a good chicken sandwich and, and you got Sally working behind a counter. Uh, why would I why would I give a shit what the owner of the company's politics are? Well, Sally doesn't Sally doesn't hate gay people and probably chances are the owner of Chick-fil-A doesn't hate gay people. I mean, he I can't has, speak he just has a sacred opinion on the definition of the word marriage and maybe his mind has changed in the last 25 years. Like I would say have. all of that doesn't matter. And here's why. Like I would say that for for you to say cuz I know that you are like in favor of like gay people being able to marry. It's a pretty reasonable stance. Yeah, and, and I think most people are. And yeah, and and yeah, you can. I mean, the polling data supports that. If you look at like the past twenty years, like the majority of this country supports gays being able to marry. It's fine. Um, and for you to walk into Chick Fil A and buy a chicken sandwich or whatever else, knowing that a portion of the bill is going towards Chick Fil A corporate profits, that's a choice you're making. And like, but I, I wouldn't say that that I don't know a basic lunch order at the Chick Fil A near my office for the Chick Fil A Deluxe is like, which is a sandwich, fries, and a medium soda is like seventeen dollars, which is mm -hmm. wild. Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to say you know what three dollars of this is is fighting the cause. Three three of my seventeen dollars or two of my seventeen dollars are are crushing gay rights. I, and, and another person would argue that, and, and I'm, what I'm that saying is that, other, that. that other and, person and, is insane. Well, the other I don't is think. Insane. I don't it's think they're insane. I think it's reasonable fact, to say. But the fact that there is still a culture, a group of people, trying to bring down Chick Fil A, the group has shrunk quite a bit in the last decade. Well, but, but and, and the I'm reason is, is culture behind this, and this is and this is kind of the crux of my argument, which we haven't gotten to yet. But I would say that, like, the things that people are complaining about, like having been canceled or whatever, like I don't think that there's been a single thing that's actually been canceled that didn't deserve it. Because first of all, Chick Fil A didn't go anywhere and isn't going anywhere, so. Yeah. Like, I think that in general, no matter how loud you have certain protesters on one side or the other saying, 
don't give your money to XYZ business, like the vast majority of people are going to assess those claims somewhat reasonably and make a decision whether they want to continue buying things from them. Because like, here's an example from just this week. So there were uh, 28 employees at Google that organized a sit-in protest at the company. So they work for Google and they had a sit-in protest at Google protesting something related to Israel's treatment of Palestinians in Gaza, right? So hold on. because so well, Just follow I, me on this. I am, but I'm trying to picture a sit-in at Google. So you're just working, you're in your and, beanbag chair, your sleep pod, and then you just stop working? I guess. I don't know. That's not important. Okay. <laughs> so Google ended up firing those, eight, those 28 employees. <laughs> And I yeah, because saw they post- stopped working in the middle of the day. They're like, you know what? We had work to do. We're going to stop. I'm not taking work. a stance on whether or not Google should have fired the employees. I don't know enough to say. Um, what what I will say is like I saw a post on Reddit and like the R Palestine um, subreddit calling for a boycott on Google because of Google's treatment of people that were protesting Israel's treatment of Palestine. And I don't want to get into a huge debate about this, but I looked at that and I said, that's not going to work. Like, you, you, like, you're not going to boycott Google. And even if you try, you're not even going to make a dent in their revenue. And so you can be mad about what Google did. Like, I'm not sure whether that's reasonable or not, but you can be. But you're not going to, like trying to cancel Google because they fired some employees that protested something. That's not going to work. I look at, I look at people well, that have Google been canceled. Is also, Google like, is, the, is the largest company on earth, arguably. It's not exactly, but it is, I mean, they do own the earth. They own Google earth, which is a hell of a product by the way. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it's a, it's a huge company. Now, if you were up against a smaller company, you would have a much better shot. Maybe, but like for example, uh, Amheuser Busch and Bud Light. And by the way, that wasn't the unpopular opinion. And, um, and the people that were fighting it were the Republicans, right? They were the yeah, right people. But Budweiser is still around, and people are still drinking Bud Light. That failed. But it, um, what I'm saying is, it took a bigger dent, and and obviously Amheuser Busch slash Bud Light is still a huge company, but it's smaller than Google, and you can see. I didn't even hear about what happened with Google, and I heard a hell of a lot of what happened with Bud Light, and I imagine yeah, the sales from Bud Light. Bud Light you know, survived. I, go, I, go I think most people survived. looked at it. Most people looked at it and saw the conservatives that were mad at Bud Light, and most people looked at that and saying, you're behaving ridiculously. So I look at somebody I, like Bill Cosby, who like nobody's going to go to a Bill Cosby show anymore, and I say, that's <laughs> probably good. Well, and, okay, but you and have the list a, goes on. You have a Weinstein and a Cosby. Yeah. They, they were very much canceled, and the people behind the cancellation, very much right. But then you have a, uh, not Chris Tucker, Kevin Hart, who was supposed to host the Oscars, and somebody dug up a tweet that he had nine years prior, and he, and he lost the Oscars gig. Right, and I look at it as, like, if you are the academy and you're trying to choose a host like you have a certain brand to protect and you're trying to keep people as happy as possible like i I, I, no no no, follow i don't think i don't think anyone would i don't think there would have been gross upset if kevin hart had hosted the oscars that year. maybe i don't know and i don't have a strong opinion on kevin hart part of the culture is but is that the, the oscars are a very liberal organization Sure, but th- okay. and the thing is, here, here's the thing. So that's the no, cult. Just, no, just let me cult. talk about this. If you're a stand-up comedian, which is where Kevin Hart got his beginnings, right? Chances are, at some point during one of your acts, you said something that was going to offend somebody. If you didn't, you probably aren't a successful stand-up comedian. And so that's a deal that you make when you choose to be a stand-up comedian as a career is I'm going to be saying things that are going to be offensive to some people because they are funny to me, and I hope they're funny to other people. And so when some people find what you say offensive, you have to just say, that's fine. Like, 
the the audience for the Oscars is different than the audience for a Kevin Hart stand up show, and the Oscars is catering to the people that it is trying to appeal to. And if it reads that maybe Kevin Hart is not the host that we want to get the most ratings out of our award show, then they're making a business decision. And I just don't see where the issue is. Like, and maybe, maybe Kevin Hart could have handled it a little bit better. I don't know much about this, but like, if you take anything somebody says from 10 years ago, like, you can probably find something stupid and chances are if that person says, yo, that was me 10 years ago. I'm sorry for that. I didn't mean it. Like I don't, <laughs> I no longer believe that or whatever. I think again, most people are willing to forgive you. So if Kevin Hart doubles down on it and says, yeah, I still believe that. Well, I mean, you're, you're making choices, man. But what I'm getting at is that, what somebody said maybe 10 years ago could be used against them. And you have all these people that jump on the bandwagon saying, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I don't think that those are not people that I feel are being canceled in the way that people are complaining about. I well, like, Kevin Hart lost his, his shot at the Oscars. Yeah. Well, and that's know, because Roseanne Barr, Roseanne Barr lost her ent- entire TV show, which was called Roseanne. And right. That was because of some political tweets that she made. Right. And again, it's, she lost her whole show. I mean, that it's sounds a like a business big decision potato. from a network to yeah. say, you know what? This person is now a liability for us in terms but, of so reputation. All of risk. The, whole, the whole conversation we're happening is cancel culture. And that the uptick in these cancellations, as of recent, is spurred by uh, a, a widening gap between the left and the right. And yeah, social media. And, I think and, and that the vast majority no of people thing is cancel culture to me. The vast majority is, of people can assess a claim and decide whether they want to continue supporting a person or a business because of their ideologies. They can look and I always use this example and I'm gonna go through it again. Aziz Ansari, like a couple years ago, a lady that's an example of somebody who go ahead and give the example for some a lady posted a story about going on a date with Aziz Ansari and wrote it in such a way to portray him as something of a predator, right? And most people read through the story and read it as this was just a bad date. Like it was awkward between the two of them, but when they read through and thought about like the actual actions that he took, everyone looked at it and was like, first of all, he's kind of an awkward guy. It's his brand. But when you look at his actual actions, like, they were getting physical, and at one point she said, no, stop, and he did. So everyone looked at it and said, no, the person that's making these accusations is, is off base here. And and everyone just kind of looked at it and said, no, this is fine. Like It's unfair to him to have kind of some of his personal life aired out this way, but we don't feel like he did anything wrong. And he's fine today. No, like he can still okay. get work. Okay, so he still has a job. Mm-hmm. Okay, now you take a Charlie Sheen, who was a womanizer, playboy, drug addict. Yep. And he had a very popular TV show, and he kind of went on this this uh, kind of manic episode. Yeah, went on a bender, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it was drugs or it was literally like bipolar kind of manic. Oh, uh, it was probably all of the above. Um, yes. <laughs> But uh, and then he lost his role on the TV show. And I think most people would say that we're not bothered by that. It was a network overreaction. Mm, think about it like this. If you're the network and that that was a show that was kind of a primetime sitcom, which is meant for like families, it was probably like a PG rated show, which means that like if you're a family, you could have your kids watch this show with you and not have to worry about like uncomfortable content being shown. And now you have the main character on the show being in the news for all sorts of behavior that maybe families aren't comfortable with. And oh, but network- families may choose not to watch the news, but he's an actor. No, 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 no. Trade no. in the TV show. Yeah, but it, it, he's it's acting the role. So the families aren't the children aren't going to be exposed to the news headlines, which they probably shouldn't be. Well, the the network made the made made the calculation that based on all of this negative news and the reputation that Charlie Sheen was developing quickly was that 
there were going to be a lot of people that would not want to watch this show because of the actor that was on the show. And so when the ratings go down and advertisers say, we don't want our ads on this show, then the show gets canceled because it's no longer profitable. So perfect example of the network responding to the culture. But the culture, the, yeah, the and culture I'll give you, was, I'll give you a people, couple other examples. Like ratings dropped. People over, stopped. Like the market reacted. Capitalism. Responses. The market so, reacted. Ratings dropped. Advertising dollars went down. The network said this show is no longer profitable for us to run. We are canceling it. Well, it was probably still profitable, but they were just, they pulled the cord just in case. Let me give you an example of some cancellations that had nothing to do with any backlash. They were just kind of preemptive uh, tail between the legs business decisions. Aunt Jemima. Aunt Jemima just disappeared. They said, we can't have a black woman serving pancakes. That's it's, racist. And, it's the, the and generally, that, it's the way that it was drawn and the way that it was portrayed. And again, this is a business decision. They can choose whether they want to have a mascot or not. I'm sure and, they can, but this is what I'm saying is a preemptive cancellation. So what? Well, this is the culture that you're saying doesn't exist. What Another I'm saying is, is it's the is free market. I'm land, saying that the a land company land. is making a decision whether or not something's going to be profitable or whether it's going to be good for their company's reputation moving Based forward. On the zeitgeist. Huh? Based on the zeitgeist. Right. And 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 yeah. time will tell whether or not that was a good decision based on their profit margins. And I like I don't see the harm here. It, it, it the, 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 it's the free market deciding what ideas are out there. Sure, because if it's just a few people that are market. upset... This wasn't the free market. This was a corporation preempting what they thought the market was going to do. Right. That's what I'm that, saying that, that's is that, that, there's the real, works. that there's a real culture. That this if is, I this think, real thing is what I'm saying. And you're saying cancel culture isn't a thing. That, Justin, that to that, me is, like, is like it, the same example I gave you with saying traffic jams aren't a thing. They're just part of traffic. You're saying cancel culture isn't a thing. It's just part of the market response, I'm saying, no, that's cancel culture and those are traffic jams. They exist very much so. Just because it's part of something else, you know, I don't like traffic jams. I, I don't think having an overreaction, to, and maybe there was a traffic accident, but we didn't have to have an overreaction. And the opposite side of the highway, the oncoming traffic, which is unaffected, doesn't need to be affected as well. They don't need to be slowing down and looking. It doesn't need to be as big of a thing that it is. And what I'm saying is that everybody that operates in a capitalist society gets to decide what they want to participate in and what they want to spend their money on. And if a company makes a read on what it, on on what consumers will want, they either get it right or they don't, and they either make money or they don't. And saying like Aunt Jemima like preempted what they thought was going to be a potential backlash against a potentially racist depiction of black people. And decided to change their mascot to something that they thought was going to be less offensive. Like, that's the same thing as me buying a stock. For example, I'm heavily invested in the pot sector and stocks. And if I buy another hundred shares of something because I think that pot's going to get legalized, I'm making a free market decision based on what I expect will happen in the future and hope that it's profitable for me. So a company changing its mascot, a company changing its lineup of shows based on what they think people will want is capitalism. But I, I still don't understand how you're behind the stance that cancel culture isn't a thing. I don't I mean, think it is. It's a palpable thing. No, it isn't. Let me let me give you two quotes. Uh, one is from Barack Obama, and the other is from Donald Trump. Uh, and you tell me whose is whose. People do really good stuff. People who do really good stuff have flaws. People who you are fighting may love their kids and, you know, share certain things with you. The second quote, uh, actually, it's not a quote, sorry, uh, comparing cancel culture to totalitarianism, saying that it's a political weapon used to punish and shame dissenters by driving them from their jobs and demanding submission. Who would you attribute the first and the, and the second one of those to? Um, well, the second one wasn't a quote. Yeah, I know. But who do you think who do you think sentiment it was? Well, I feel like I'm going to have to just go counterintuitive here and say that the second one was from Obama. 
so the first one was from Obama. People who you really I was, I was guessing that you were trying to like bait me into something yeah, here. I just I, I, I guessed against my intuition. This was like this is like the the like the second paragraph on, on some article. Right. So uh, people like, you're fighting love their kids and you know share certain things with you. Uh, but point is is that people who are really good do have flaws. Sure. And, and, and and I think that people are like I think the market is overall well well tuned to make judgments and assess what those flaws are and how severe they are. But what I'm saying is I don't think they are. I think what happens is this well-tuned swells sometimes and the market overreacts just because a tweet starts to get traction. And I mean, t I'll give you an example. What's happening in, in, in Israel and Gaza right now. Okay. There's an incredible amount of hate speech and, and people shitting on different cultures and religions. Okay. Now, if you take what's happening now, 17 years from now, out of context, and someone says, damn, I hate, I don't even want to say it because I'm going to, uh, even the freaking phrase is going to get me kicked off of TikTok for some type of hate speech. But damn, I hate X. Um, bear in mind, maybe their entire family was just killed by X. Now, obviously, it's an overstatement. Okay. And in that moment, it comes with a certain context. But that opinion, 17 years later, or 23 years later, or eight years later, could be taken out of context. And now you become a an ex hater. Right. But then you get the chance and, to respond and you get to say, but not always, not yes, always. always, you always get a chance to respond. I, I don't think always. You always do. And I, I don't think it's always, even if your response is meritable, I don't necessarily think that you can stop the public's opinion. Roseanne Barr was on like pain medicine and she was drunk and she said some political tweet and then took it down because maybe she changed her mind or realized it was just some, yeah, but you know, and, and she and, never really issued an apology and she never really changed her, her approach or her stance on anything. So people are just like, okay, like what you said when you were drunk or high or whatever was really just a reflection of how you actually feel because your apology rings hollow. And it sounds to us like you actually believe those things and you're just trying to avoid the consequences of your actions instead of expressing actual regret. Well, I'm sure there was some real actual regret. I mean, I think the only actual regret, regret was that it cost her money in, in, in business opportunities. I don't think the actual regret was her opinions. Uh, but I think people are entitled to their own opinions. You know yeah, I mean? they are. And other people are entitled to decide whether or not they want to give business to those people who hold those opinions. But I, 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 I'm still lost. And we, maybe we can move on. And we can start talking about Trump because I know you have. Well, like, no let me ask you this. Trial. Let me ask you this. Bill Cosby is going on tour in New York City. Is this, is this real or hypothetical? Because I don't think he's going on tour at all. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, yes, I didn't know. I thought no. he was like legally blind and could barely mm, walk. I mean, I did see an article about six months ago about how Bill Cosby was weighing going on like some kind of a comedy tour. But Was it in The Onion? <laughs> no. No, this, this was real. But as far as I'm aware, he has no plans or any kind of a comedy tour. But in this hypothetical, Bill Cosby is going on a comedy tour. And... One of your coworkers says, hey, I just got like four tickets to the Cosby show. Like you, you and a friend should come with me and my girlfriend and we should go watch this show. Are you going? Yeah, I'd probably go. I'd be curious how it was going to go. <laughs> I'd be very, very curious. Okay. And I, I, I yeah, probably would. He's lost and he's, he has lost any positive opinion that I had for him at all. I probably wouldn't. And all right, so now let me ask you this question. By the way, I do, I do uh, condemn everything that he's done and said. I don't, I don't <laughs> think he's a good guy. I'm just saying, I, I would be curious. Okay. If for that reason, I would now, be next question: What if you had to pay for the tickets yourself? They're fifty bucks a ticket. Would you pay for the tickets? I wouldn't. Pay. I, I might pay, but I think uh, not, I'm not that interested. Not for fifty bucks worth. So maybe he makes less revenue on ticket sales. Although I'm sure some people would be curious. Some, what well, I mean, you can look at Louis C.K., who was quote unquote canceled, but he's still playing to sold out theaters and still doing comedy. And and so I just look at it as like, 
he wasn't canceled. Like his show was canceled because like there was a huge backlash against what he did. He lost his his show. He yeah, uh, but that's because the 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 network's like nobody's going to want to watch this anymore, and like we're not going to pay for future seasons when we don't think that the res- revenue is going to be there because we expected 10 million to people watch and now there's only going to be like 200,000 so paying 40 million dollars for the next season isn't worth it to us anymore but now he can still go to comedy shows and people can still choose to pay for a ticket to watch him do his act and there's nothing wrong with that but i feel like we're cherry picking examples on both sides of this thing and and all that I'm saying is that it's a real thing. It's I haven't, I haven't, I, every single one of your examples, I've been remarkably consistent about, which I've been saying every single one of the examples, it's fine. Well, but that's like me saying every, every uh, traffic jam is traffic. It's, it's, that's my point is we, you're, you're failing to acknowledge that, that there's a culture, there's, there's so, mass conversation about it. Hold on. There's a swelling of public opinion. Right. To but me, that you're sounds failing like culture. To, what you're failing that's to culture. recognize is your analogy is like driving around in transport is capitalism. It's like, and as a result of driving around and trying to transport yourself, sometimes you're going to get into a traffic jam because that's just how driving works is that in certain parts, you're going to run into a problem. And the same thing works with capitalism. You're still like in certain parts of capitalism, you're going to have problems. And like, but as we see those problems swell so much in the last decade, we're seeing this new response to these issues where there is real culture around it. But what we're talking about is emergent phenomenon from a system. Okay, so we, so we acknowledge that there is some emerging, some swelling that wasn't there 15 years ago, that wasn't there 30 years ago. Not that it wasn't didn't exist right, at all. Because but now where you used to have smooth flowing traffic, maybe a little slowdown, is a jam. Right. You, you can look at bumper like, to bumper. look at satellite pictures. I, well, I hate using this example, but look at like Dubai, right? Look at satellite pictures of Dubai from 20 years ago. There were no traffic jams in Dubai. Why? Because there was no people there. Now right. you've got traffic jams in Dubai every day. Why? Because there's a couple million more people. And it's, you have a few million more people. Uh, a few hundred million more people on social media, right? Creating a culture around these cancellations, right? So th- this is like this is just a natural result of more per- of more people participating in a more open marketplace. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you another uh, example uh, of cancel culture is the number of times uh, we've seen impeachments. It's it That's is now cancel it's culture. A, it's a culture try to try trying to claw down someone else that's not what that's not cancel culture i would i would think it, it's exactly that it, it is public isn't. outcry the public outcry for impeachment is that much larger now than it has been in the past and you've had lots of presidents who have done bad and, and bad things in the past and what i'm telling you is like with with um secretary of homeland security alejandro mayorkas getting impeached that was pure political retribution and has nothing to do with cancel culture that was the republicans trying to satisfy their base and it it was a political stunt that a lot of like that was called out and like even a lot of the like you didn't even get all all the republicans to vote for it because there were a number of republicans they're like this is stupid this is a political stunt so even members of their own party acknowledged it for what it was. So, like, I, my my question to the live audience is: Cancel culture, a thing? Is it real or is it not real? That that is my question for the commenters: Is cancel culture real or not real? Um, Rosh gives a good example. Speaking of impeachments, as a segue. <laughs> to talk about Trump and what's going on. Uh, Because to me, the way that I look at everything that's going on with Trump is, I mean, I, I, is the Democrats doing everything they can to not make him eligible to be able to run in this year's election. And it seems. I would argue that he shouldn't be eligible to run. 
Sure, but if half of the country elects him, more than half the country, well, I mean, it really, it's going to come down to the Electoral College. But if more than half, and listen, I don't want Trump to be president, be very clear about that. But I will say, if more than half the country does want him to be president, then that's democracy. Yes, it is. So to me, everything is going on with Trump. And I I, I think probably he should be convicted. Uh, and and I, it sounds like there's more going on than I even know about. But to me, it also seems simultaneously like a desperate attempt by the Democrats to kind of stack the cards or remove some cards from the deck in, in this election. I mean, I completely disagree with that assessment. So fill me in as to as to what's going on that I'm missing, because I'm not fa- I, I am really been trying to black out a lot of news lately because it's, well, it's so I mean, extremist. They're most of the way done with jury selection and his trial in New York. And hang on, I want to. All right. Sasha says any celebrity with a solid fan base or company generating billions yearly can never be truly canceled unless they're like a pedo or trafficking humans or, or some like despicable shit. And I would agree. It's like like you're not getting canceled unless you've done something really terrible. And for people who are I just look at it whenever someone complains about being canceled, I look at it as I don't as them saying. I don't like being held accountable for my actions. Well, how about Dylan Mulvaney, who was relatively innocent in the in the entire thing and has really been shit on? That's that's the consequence of operating in a, in a space that but you this know. Is not, this is not, this is not uh, sorry. Let me finish. I'll let you finish. My bad. Like, I don't know anything about Dylan Mulvaney besides they're a trans person that like does podcasts and and videos and is an advocate in the trans community now. So, but in in contrast with what Sasha just said, no, no, hear me out in terms of, and I actually don't know what Dylan Mulvaney has been through since like the Bud Light promotional thing. However, Dylan Mulvaney knowingly operates in a space that is currently highly controversial. Whether or not you think it should be controversial right now or not is irrelevant to this conversation. The fact is, it is a controversial space. And when you get more attention, which Dylan Mulvaney did, you're going to get more positive and more negative attention. And that's just the cost of exposure. And if you didn't want exposure, if you didn't want attention, then you shouldn't have started a podcast and put YouTube videos and everything else up because the whole point of a podcast and YouTube videos is for exposure and for attention. And so you don't get to have it both ways where I only want positive attention. But I think in the the question, uh, let me give you some comments here because you're seeing the the comments come through on Instagram. But uh, so far as uh, TikTok says, yes, it is real. Yes, it's very real very real uh doesn't mean that it isn't real so i think you're uh, i'm not saying that it's not justified in some cases i'm just saying my perspective is your your words cancel culture isn't real i disagree with i think it's very real what i'm saying is that it is just an effect of the free market and the free market in this particular case is pretty good at at correcting Okay, but here's we're having a conversation. I just saw a phantasm and the lamp fell over and you said ghosts aren't real. And and you said it's just lamps fall over sometimes. And I'm saying, no, I, we both saw it. We saw this this ghost here. It's maybe a bad analogy because I'm a prove lady. it. <laughs> prove that it was a ghost. Prove that it wasn't some other factor. But, but, but we both agree that the lamp fell over. And, and, and I think here's the issue is that I... I thought we both saw this, and I'm saying there was a ghost. Uh, and although in this analogy, I'm pr- probably taking the okay. So in this analogy, I, and you're Harvey saying- Weinstein can no longer produce movies, and you're looking at me like, huh? I wonder why this guy's no longer like a mainline producer on all these big hits. And I'm saying he here is all the reasons. But are and you saying the he market was has said no? We yeah, don't want him anymore. So he was canceled, and that's cancel culture. That he was canceled because he did horrible things, and the free market responded. The yes. free market said, "We no longer want to support somebody That's, like this." I think now we're arg- now we've okay. So we boiled this down. Now we're arguing over the definition of the word culture. So we agree that he was canceled. 
Yes, okay? the free market now, and response. And now, that's what I'm saying. What I'm calling what I'm calling culture. You're calling free market. Yes, it's okay. just the free market. And it, it, but again, here now here lies the difference between traffic and traffic jam. Hold on, and, here I'm oh, going to give another story. When, now here. you're looking. You're looking at a bunch of cars stopped on the middle of the highway, and I'm saying that's a traffic jam, and you're saying no, it's just traffic. Okay, saying, but they're not Here, going let me give you another story. And this is this is a famous one, and I hate referencing this person too, but I have to. Um, there was a comedian that was telling a story on the Joe Rogan Experience about him performing at a college, and the joke he told was about like being gay, and how about how he didn't think like being gay was a choice because he's like, "There's black gay people who would choose to be gay and black," which I think is a funny joke. Um, who, but, who would choose additional hard? Yeah, who? Yeah, who? Would, yeah, who would choose to be like a second marginalized group? Is the joke, and like shortly after he told that joke, he got pulled off stage, and it was because people in the audience were offended. And you can argue about whether that or not that joke was offensive. And personally, I don't think it's offensive, but somebody else can choose to be offended by it. That's fine. And people are saying, well, you can't tell jokes anymore. And you can't do comedy anymore. And what I would say is, and any comedian will tell you this, you need to know your audience. And if you're telling a joke to an audience that is probably prone to overreacting to things, then you need to modify your material. And I'm not saying... Like, no, but the thing is, the fact that's that again, that's the free market. It's these people were at a show, they didn't get what they liked, so they asked for the show to end. And the comedian can complain about this, but insane, the thing is, you is didn't insane. play to your audience. This is insane. You would think you could make a a racial joke or a gay joke on a college campus. You you think so you I, can? I mean, maybe, but and I would I would, I would you, argue you that, like that's a good joke. Who your audience may be, but what I'm saying is. I think that's if an overreaction by a few people that were very loud and very maybe. Aggressive. But here's the, here's, the here's my point. And Justin. then other people jumped on board because okay, it's becoming a here's, culture. Here's my people point. should just suck it up. No, and, and because now years. we're now we're having a different argument. Now our argument is, I don't think this is offensive. And and, and, and I don't, I, and, well, okay. I don't think this is offensive. You don't think this is offensive. Therefore, okay. other people shouldn't find the this fact, offensive. Fact, and that's a bad argument. The fact that the college came and said, you're coming off stage. You're coming off stage. And I've heard this guy recount the story, actually. I can't remember his name, but I know mm -hmm. the exact story you're talking about. The fact that the school sent somebody to pull him off stage is a shift in the culture. And that's yes, what I'm talking it about. Is. I don't think that this would have happened 10 or 15 or 25 or 50 years ago on a college it campus. It might not have. However. Would be booed and then go on with the show, by the way. And then somebody would say, hey, that was inappropriate. We're pulling you from the stage. Look, and that's what I'm saying is this shift in the culture. So and, here's, and, here's and where the free market not acknowledge To not acknowledge this, I think, is wild. And you're seeing groups of people demand that someone's canceled. And you're seeing corporations make these big judgment calls by canceling TV shows, by removing black people from their logo, by removing Native Americans in canoes from their box of butter, okay? It, that before there's any complaint, before there, but that's it, a business decision. And it is a business decision. But what I'm saying is, you're seeing more businesses make these decisions because it's becoming culturally appropriate. Right. But hear me, hear me out on this. This is the cancel culture. Listen I'm, to me. I'm, I'm I'm just confused as to how we are still in argument over the word culture because. Now we're having a different argument. The, the argument that you're, we're now having is about values. And there's no right answer there. Because I'm not having an argument no, about values. I'm having an argument against whether it exists or not. And, and, and you're saying that cancel culture doesn't exist. And, and no, I what I'm saying is that cancel culture, culture is the free market. And calling it cancel culture is lazy. It's saying that you're attributing... A, a lazy phrase to a phenomenon that is natural. And if you want to argue about what values or what things should or should not be offensive, go ahead and have that argument. But that's not relevant to what cancel culture is. And let's think about this college. I don't remember. I think it might have been Columbia College in New York. 
but if it wasn't, then like, don't hold me to it. So if I'm a stand-up comedian and I'm looking to book shows and I hear this story from this other comedian who got kicked off stage for telling a joke, if I'm a stand-up comedian, I say, maybe I don't want to play gigs at this college. And so you're going to have a free market response to the colleges that are doing this. And maybe those colleges aren't going to be able to book any acts for their students. And so, again, this is, this is a self-correcting phenomenon where the free market acts one way, other actors act another way, and you reach an equilibrium. And so maybe these colleges don't book comedians anymore. And well, maybe comedians and choose not to book. We're seeing, shows we're seeing a lot of a lot of comedians choose a lot of very popular comedians choose not to play colleges. And that's, that's fine. Really sad. And now colleges just get this silly puppet show comedian, whereas the comedian is the puppet. Uh, yeah, but what I'm here's here's where here, here's where the third level of correction happens is maybe students at colleges say, "Hey, we're sick of like." this small group of people that are that are complaining about being offended by literally any joke deciding who we can and can't listen to we want you guys to book these comedians that we like and screw the people that are complaining about it and the college can make a decision there again it's a business decision i will agree that it is the market speaking um i just it, think always it, it are i think we're very much on the same page we just use a different term for it so we got to hit some bar trivia because we had a question last week, and the question was, James. Oh, um, what object will have less holes in it when you add a hole to it? So uh, I learned the correct answer. It was not the answer I had in mind, but go ahead and share the correct answer. A net. And did I tell you what, what answer I was thinking of? No. I was thinking of a ring, like a wedding ring. If you put a hole in it, it then no longer has any holes at all. I mean, if you put but, a hole through it, so that's now just a if you, band. Well, if you, yeah, a, if you were to put a hole in the band, it would, it would no longer be. It would no longer be circular. Yeah, it would yeah. lose its only hole, um, which I'm attributing as a, a correct answer. But the the real correct answer is is a net. I got a great one for you though. This is a really cool one. I love it. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how it fucking broke my brain. Oh, yeah. We got to give a shout out to Matt Plunkett, who get, who guessed the correct answer did, last Matt, week. And it, it was his birthday, I think, a couple of days ago, too. So happy birthday. Congratulations on the right answer. We'll send you a T-shirt sometime a decade from now when we have some um, T-shirts. Real quick, I, got, I just want to hit Sasha's comment um, saying the issue with cancel culture is some of these dumbasses will take a joke or social commentary to heart and then start doxing people online, sending death threats and even swatting streamers in an attempt. To, to get the streamer killed or harmed. And yeah, that's, I mean, you're going to have wackos that, that well, overreact to things. That and we've, we've enabled through social media. And so, I mean, th I mean, we, if you want to, if you really want to boil this down, this is going to end up coming to like my age old, old man yells at cloud moment, which is social media is the problem here because it allows these echo chambers to, to exist. All and right. people never get outside information. All right. Let me hit you with this question before we run out of time. I love Fire this. away. Three men check into a hotel room for which they paid $30. So $30 in total. The next day, the manager glanced at the records and realized the men had been overcharged. He gave the bellhop $5 to return to the three men. On the way to their room, the bellhop decided to pocket two of those dollars himself and give each of the men one dollar so three men they paid 30 bucks the manager gave him five bucks back he stuck two in his pocket and gave a refund one dollar to each of the three men now each of the three men had paid nine dollars since they got a one dollar refund but nine dollars times three men is a total of 27 dollars and the bellhop took the remaining two which adds to 29. So the question is, James, please don't answer this on air. The question is, what happened to the $1? How did this $1 vanish entirely? I'll read it one more time so that your brain doesn't break. Three men check into a hotel room for which they paid $30. The next day, the manager glanced at the records, realized he'd get, he had overcharged the men. He gave the bellhop $5 to return to the three men. On the way to their room, the bellhop decided to pocket $2 for himself and gave each of the men $1.
the three men had now paid $9 each, a total of $27. This, plus the $2 that Bellhop kept, makes a total of $29. What happened to the other dollar? I'm just going to say you're asking this to an accountant. <laughs> That's why I said in the middle of the question, James, don't answer this. Uh, it, this, this, broke, this broke my brain for a little bit. But uh, on that note, we are out of time. Don't forget to visit Sip Talk podcast.com you can buy us a drink buy us a shot and buy us a bottle we'll see you next time adios all right that concludes this episode thank you for joining let me know what you thought of the trivia question in the comments and visit siptalkpodcast.com i like pbr i just got priced out of it